demonstrated fear from the Oval Office, here's the gravitas involved. The decision to send troops to Little Rock to enforce school desegregation, the Cuban Missile Crisis, the Space Shuttle Challenger disaster, the 9-11 attacks, the Iraq War, the coronavirus outbreak. Now, we expect it to be about two simultaneous wars, and the U.S.'s response to Hamas's attack against Israel and Russia's war in Ukraine. And as for the latest devastation on the ground in Gaza, the blast at the hospital, well, President Biden did not wait until he returned to the Oval Office to address that. No, he spoke to the press, and on camera, no less, from onboard Air Force One. I don't say things like that unless I have faith in the source from which I've gotten people at the Defense Department who I respect and the intelligence community that I respect to be as highly improbable as it would be. And there's new video tonight that shows a rocket fired from Gaza exploding in flight above Gaza City. Now, the Israeli Defense Forces point to the video as evidence that Israel was not responsible for the explosion at the hospital. I don't, I'm not going to pretend to be an expert in analyzing rockets and what happens to them, but I've got experts here to unpack all of it in just a moment. But there are many people that have already drawn their conclusions about this entire war and all that has followed and perhaps will come. And you've got protests that are spreading not only here in this country, but around the world. In fact, Capitol Police today arrested some 300 protesters from Jewish Voice for Peace at the Canyon Rotunda, as protesters flooded the streets of American cities and across the Middle East. Now, the history of America certainly understands the, the value of peaceful protests and, of course, of speaking truth to power, but I have to emphasize the word truth, as in facts, not misinformation, not propaganda and of course the fog of war makes that very difficult at times to be discerning and I can't do it with a sound bite nor will I try to do so we have to actually have real conversations with depth and with context and we're going to go there tonight even when well especially because it's uncomfortable and I'll be joined by a rabbi and an imam sitting here together for the honest discussion we need that's coming up later this hour and here with me tonight, two experts who can help us answer some of these very many questions. CNN Jerusalem, Jerusalem correspondent Hadaz Gold and Colonel Frederick Layton, who spent 26 years as an intelligence officer in the U.S. Air Force. But I want to get right away to what we're learning, still learning about the explosion at the hospital in Gaza. CNN Chief National Security Correspondent Alex Marquardt has been analyzing the video. Alex, tell us all about it. Laura, the explosion at Ahali Baptist Hospital rocked northern Gaza. It lit up the night sky. You can see it in this video. CNN has geolocated that blast site to the hospital. And then we also have this other angle from Al Jazeera appearing to show, according to uh, an analysis by CNN, a rocket fired from inside Gaza. It then explodes in the air, and seconds later, another blast is seen at the Ahli Baptist Hospital. Now, we have not determined definitively that the rocket is the cause of that explosion. But in Tel Aviv today, the president, he said that U.S. intelligence matches Israel's version of what happened. Take a listen. I was outraged and saddened by the enormous loss of life yesterday in the hospital in Gaza. Based on the information we've seen to date, it appears a result of an errant rocket fired by a terrorist group in Gaza. Now, the U.S. hasn't named the group, but Israel says it is Palestinian Islamic Jihad, which is allied with Hamas and also linked with Iran. This American assessment, which came less than 24 hours after the deadly strike, was based on what the White House now says is, quote, intelligence, missile activity, and open source video and images of the incident. The statement goes on to say that uh, some Palestinian militants in Gaza themselves believe that this strike was, in fact, carried out by Islamic Jihad. Laura. Alex Marquardt, a lot to unpack. Thank you so much. I want to bring in Israeli government spokesman Elon Levy. He's here now. Elon, thank you for being here today. We're going through a lot of this. And the U.S. review is finding that Israel is not responsible for that deadly hospital blast. But that's, that's not calming down the region, is it? You've got neighboring countries who don't believe it. There's large-scale protests. So where does that leave Israel now going forward? 
But you're right, many people are not buying the overwhelming evidence that shows this was a Palestinian Islamic Jihad rocket that mixed fired. Unfortunately, because much of the international media was very quick to run headlines saying 500 people killed uh, in hospital in Israeli airstrike, Palestinian officials say, before there was any evidence. Now, when those reports ran, the only evidence was the claim of Hamas, the brutal genocidal terror organization that perpetrated the October 7th massacre without a shred of evidence. Now, it took the Israeli army a few hours to conduct its original investigation, that is exactly what you would expect of the professional army of a democratic state. And as I hope you're going to discuss with your correspondents now, the overwhelming preponderant evidence now points in that direction. It's an open shut case now that this was errant rocket fire from inside uh, the Gaza Strip, Palestinian Islamic Jihad, a fire we're seeing there from the propellant that was supposed to fuel the rocket all the way into Israel, in fact, exploding in that hospital parking lot. In fact, we are going to go there and unpack greater and greater detail. It's really important to do so for many of the reasons that you've just said, because people have drawn conclusions and because of the really the impact of all that has taken place and the weight of it. In addition to this, President Biden is telling reporters that Israel will allow aid into Gaza and that he was blunt with Israeli leaders on the need to help refugees. Can you confirm that Israel is on board with what President Biden is saying? Indeed, Israel has no objection to humanitarian aid reaching the people of Gaza through Egypt's uh, Rafah border crossing. We have just one condition, that that humanitarian aid not reach Hamas, the brutal, bloodthirsty terror organization that perpetrated the atrocities of the October 7th massacre. That is our right under international law to insist that humanitarian aid donated by the international community not reach the military machine that is currently conducting a war of aggression against us, just as Hamas a few days ago stole stocks from the United Nations, the UN in fact admitting in a tweet that Hamas had come and taken medicine and uh, medicine and fuel away from UNRWA stocks, enough fuel to power Gaza's desalination plants for six days. That was stolen by Hamas from the United Nations stockpiles. Now, as for the border crossings with Israel, our position is very clear. We will not allow our border crossings, the same border crossings that have been attacked, where people have been butchered, that are under fire from rockets, to be used to deliver uh, trade and aid into the Gaza Strip as long as our 200 hostages are inside the Gaza Strip. We have 200 people, from babies to elderly people, who are being held brutally hostage by Palestinian Islamic Jihad and Hamas without basic conditions, without access to the Red Cross. We demand their immediate and unconditional return. And we hope that Hamas will do the basic humanitarian thing, although after the atrocities of October 7th, when they burned and beheaded people and tied children up and completed whole families alive, we have no expectation of basic humanitarian conditions from Hamas. So that is our demand, that they release our hostages. And in the meanwhile, humanitarian aid can enter from Egypt. Certainly your concerns are clear and evident as the justification for what you have just stated. But how do you intend to enforce and to ensure that what you're saying in terms of humanitarian aid will be heeded. Will you not allow people to go through it forward until you have certain conditions that are tangibly relayed to you, or is there something short of that? You ask excellent questions about how the international community is supposed to ensure that its taxpayer dollars do not reach the bloodthirsty terrorists who perpetrated the October 7th massacre. You know, I remember after the 2014 war, Operation Protective Edge, there was a mechanism set up by the United Nations called the Gaza Reconstruction Mechanism. I was involved in, in working on it as a young soldier myself, and that was supposed to make sure that aid reached the people of Gaza to rebuild and not reach Hamas. And what we are seeing now is the result of many years in which concrete that was supposed to reach people's homes got diverted away to building Hamas bunkers and shelters and pipes that were supposed to be laid down for water ended up being taken and converted into rockets. And in what comes next, we're going to expect the international community to insist on very strict safeguards to make sure that the aid that is being donated by people around the world through humanitarian agencies, through foreign governments, not reach the, the, the military terror machine that on the 7th of October murdered 1,400 of our people, injured 4,000 of them, and took 200 of them hostage without basic humanitarian conditions into the Gaza Strip. Elon Levy, thank you so much for joining us. We're going to unpack this further. Thank you. Thank you.
here with Tsunasi and Sagnas Gold and Colonel Cedric Layden, just just in hearing what he had to say about the conditions, really, of um, being in compliance or going along with what President Biden has said, the conditions about hostages being released, the ideas of how to ensure that the aid is not going to be essentially taken and siphoned off by Hamas. Is it realistic to think that could actually be a condition that could be met before aid gets there? Well, I think it's possible, but you know, there's no peacekeeping mechanism. There are no troops on the ground to uh, keep anybody away from these uh, these stores. Uh, you know, with any any uh, uh, mechanism to uh, prevent Hamas from uh, going after these things. So it's it's a bit touchy, uh, and I think there are because there are no mechanisms of enforcement. I think it's going to be a bit of a problem, Laura. But you mentioned the UN and the international community. Obviously, he seems to be imploring vigilance from just outside of Israel as well. Is there a collective way to get this done? I mean, I think the only mechanism right now would be the United Nations, who does have a presence there. But it would be really difficult to do that in a time of war. I don't know how you can actually do these checks in the correct way. Now, Egypt could do it on their end, uh, but then there's the concern of where this aid will go to. Now, in Israel's mind, they are doing this operation to completely eliminate Hamas. So in a way, you know, if they can go in and eliminate Hamas the way they think they need to do so, then that aid would essentially have nowhere to go to be administered by Hamas if they no longer exist, if Israel is successful. You know, I want to talk about this, the, the video. And we, there's been a lot of criticism for the media about the headlines that initially came out um, about whether and who was responsible for the attack on the hospital, whether it was the errant rocket or whether it was an Israeli airstrike. You saw the video tonight, Colonel Layton, and um, it's even also analyzed, showing that the rocket was fired from Gaza, appearing to explode in the air moments before the hospital explosion. Now, obviously, the CNN has not made its own independent assessment of this intelligence, but what is next in terms of how to look at this and how you see it? Yeah, Laura, the, the key thing is, you know, what kind of explosion happened and where did it occur? So uh, in the video, we do see uh, an explosion occurring over the hospital, mm -hmm. the general area of the hospital. Uh, that explosion is consistent with a rocket exploding in flight, in mid-flight. Uh, that very fact lends a lot of credence to the Israeli position on this. Because there wasn't enough disruption to qualify for an above air force, you think? That's part of it, okay. exactly. And the other thing, that, another question that really hasn't been answered yet is where were Israeli aircraft at that particular moment in time? Uh, so if you know the flight path of Israeli <coughs> aircraft at that particular moment in time, was it possible for an Israeli aircraft to have fired a missile at the hospital from the position that that aircraft was in at that specific moment in time? Uh, nobody has answered that specific question yet to my knowledge. However, uh, everything that we see in the video, all the other evidence, including the fact that there is no huge crater anywhere near the hospital, that indicates that it was not a munition that was fired from an aircraft. That's important. I wonder if President Biden is going to address that in his address tomorrow. Obviously, the nuance you're talking about details that you don't often hear from a President of the United States about issues such as this, but what do you expect to hear? I think he will have to address it just because of what you said, what so much of the world saw in those first few hours, those headlines. And if you're just an average person who's scrolling through the headlines, you see that and you say, okay, well, they're to blame. And then you're hearing the President say, that, the, that America needs to support Israel in this war against Hamas. So he needs to kind of bridge that gap, explaining again, once again, why Americans should care about something that's happening thousands of miles away. And also, we do expect him to make the case for a huge aid package. Now, this aid package will not just be for Israel, it'll be for Ukraine, it'll be for the border, it'll be for other elements that, you know, other issues that America cares about. But he's going to be making a big ask from the American people. And I think there's a lot of concern also from Americans that there will be Americans involved. They know that there's carrier ships off the coast. They know that there's Marines potentially in route. So we'll potentially hear from him about whether Americans should be concerned that once again they will be getting entangled into a foreign war that's not necessarily on their soil. But we also think we're going to hear from him about the aid and about the humanitarian crisis that people are seeing on their screens more and more and trying to explain what America is doing in its support of Israel and why it's so important in this moment. Because also keep in mind for Israel, they need this aid because not only are they fighting Hamas, they have issues on the northern border with Hezbollah. They need to get ready for that. Also, those Iron Dome, those are very expensive. Every single time they are launched, that's tens of thousands of dollars for a single 
intercepts. I think about how many of those intercepts have now been launched. That's, a, that's an incredible thing to think about. And just one, one quick thing yeah. about that is that is why Hamas was trying to overwhelm the system when they attacked on Saturday, uh, because they know seventh. the seventh uh, when they did that. Uh, they made it uh, very clear that what their intent was was to overwhelm the defenses and do it in a way uh, that would, in essence, potentially bankrupt uh, Israel. And that, if they kept up with this, uh, you know, with this activity, and they have a lot of rockets, probably a lot more than the intelligence has assessed in in their possessions. So uh, wow. that is one of the things to, that uh, these countries, do, these entities, do is they try to overwhelm defenses that have been established over a long period of time. And uh, that's uh, that's going to be a key factor when you look at it from a fiscal standpoint as well as from a military standpoint. And Hezbollah has ten, tens times yeah. more than what Hamas has, so there is a preparation element in this as well. Wow. Thinking about how to overwhelm the system, and obviously this takes a great deal of thought, strategy, and planning. And of course, President Biden wants to talk about that, but also another war in Ukraine as well, and the aid. Hadass Gold, um, Colonel Cedric Layton, excuse me, thank you both so much. There's federal and local law enforcement on the alert tonight, watching for potential threats right here in the United States in the wake of the Israel Hamas war. The former Deputy FBI Director Andrew McCabe is here to tell us what we all should be looking out for. So we think about this. Can we get real clear about life with psoriasis? Yeah. I'm ready. Is your treatment leaving you with uncontrolled symptoms? Like the cover it ups and brush it offs? Enough was good enough. Don't stay hiding or hurting. When your lotions and creams don't do enough to help treat the inflammation beneath the skin causing plaques and pain, it's time to get real about psoriasis so your dermatologist can help you get clear. Make the appointment and ask about real clear skin. Hi, I'm Ideal and I lost 90 pounds on Golo. I struggled with weight loss and weight gain my entire life. With all the yo-yo dieting I did in the past, I would lose 20, 30, 50 pounds just to gain them over and over again. In one year, I've lost five sizes and I'm on my way to lose another three. With Golo, I can do it. Change your life at golo.com. That's G-O-L-O dot com. Vicks Vapo Stick provides soothing, non-medicated Vicks Vapors. Easy to apply for the whole family. Vicks Vapo Stick and Tri Vapo Shower for steamy Vicks Vapors. You should Angie that. Angie what? Angie that. It means comparing custom quotes from skilled service professionals or booking at an upfront price so you can find the best price for you. Get started today at Angie.com. Feeling sluggish or weighed down could be a sign that your digestive system isn't at its best. Metamucil gummies make it easy to get the fiber you need, promoting your digestive health for a better you. Metamucil gummies, the easy way to get your daily fiber. Unnecessary action here. Missing punches. Unnecessary. Check reverse. Unnecessary. Time sheet correction. Unnecessary. Unnecessary. Phone. You'll be ready. Make the unnecessary unnecessary. Let your employees do their own payroll. ABT Self Setup, featuring Google Nest products. Now you can easily install your system that's backed by ABT's 24-7 monitor with no long-term contracts. So you have a home with no worries. Brought to you by ABT. It's nothing. Sounds like something. When you have not your heart for infection, just a little diarrhea. Pepto Bismol coats and soothes for fast relief when you need it most. At AG, we believe that nourishing your whole body is key to unlocking your vitality as you age, allowing you to thrive both physically and mentally. This is foundational nutrition made simple with AG1. Frustrated by skin tags? Dr. Scholl says the breakthrough you've been waiting for. The first FDA cleared at home skin tag remover, clinically proven to remove skin tags safely in as little as one treatment. My home is yours, dear. Just take my hand. <laughs>
To give your teeth a dentist clean feeling, start with a round brush head. Add power, and you've got Oral B. Round cleans better by surrounding each tooth to remove 100% more plaque for a superior clean. Oral B. Brush like a pro. Before and bath fitter. Now's the time to call bath fitter to get a beautiful after. With our unique tub over tub process, there's no mess or stress. Bath fitter, it just fits. Visit bathfitter.com to get a free consultation. Now, tonight, the FBI, Homeland Security, and mm -hmm. law enforcement agencies all across the country are now on heightened alert. Why? Well, there are increasing reports of threats against Jewish and Muslim communities in the wake of the Israel-Hamas war. I want to get some perspective now from San Antonio law enforcement analyst Andrew McCabe. He is a former FBI deputy director. So if anyone thought this was only going to happen abroad, that it would stay abroad, they are sorely mistaken because we've seen a lot of things already happening in terms of the concern for what might be. In fact, Hamas, they have not called for attacks on U.S. soil specifically, but other foreign terrorist organizations have actually called for attacks that are, quote, may prompt homegrown extremists, according to a law enforcement bulletin. That's right. When you hear that, what goes through your mind? Well, for me, it's like a flashback to those many, many uh, uh, sleepless nights uh, in the aftermath of terrorist attacks overseas, back in the days when I was running the FBI's counterterrorism division, the first thing you worry about here are sympathetic attacks in the homeland, either by trained operatives who have been sent here by the terrorist group, in this case it would be Hamas, or simply by people who are drawn to the ideology uh, put out by that group, they're supporters of the group, and they see this activity overseas, and they feel like, this is it, this is my call to action, I need to do something here. Is that akin to the so-called lone wolf, or is that a different category? It's very, so those folks, those people who are um, not not members of the group, not directed by the group, they're simply motivated by the group. That's what we're that's what we're referring to when we talk about lone wolves. People who've gone through this radicalization period by themselves. They've been ingesting uh, internet propaganda. Uh, they're drawn to the ideology. They become progressively more violent and less stable, those are the folks you're worried that a moment like this will cause them to actually take the step into committing a violent act. So how do you track or trace that in a way that you can prevent and anticipate well enough in advance to not have an attack occur? It's incredibly hard, right? Yeah. Because you're not investigating and keeping track of everybody in this country who believes a certain thing. You don't investigate people over their beliefs. But what you rely upon is your established network of people and organizations who, who bring information into law enforcement or into the FBI. Um, oftentimes, we build bridges into the community, into the faith-based community, into um, folks who are coming across people and might come across someone who raises some suspicions, and oftentimes it's those connections that these people, uh, that cause these folks to come to our attention. When you say build a bridge, do you mean get an informant? You know, sometimes it's getting an informant, sometimes it's people who, you know, get themselves in trouble and then develop relationships with law enforcement to get out of that trouble, but oftentimes it's much simpler than that. It's having the heads of our 56 field offices around the country spend a lot of their time knocking on doors, going to the mosque, going to the synagogue, going to the community centers, introducing themselves, building that sort of personal relationship that enables people to think, you know what, when things get tough, like we're in right now, and uh, things come across the radar that concern them, they have someone in the field office to reach out to who will respond appropriately. In terms of social media or different platforms, I'm hearing a lot about Telegram. Yeah. A lot about, maybe people aren't using it and thinking about it as much as, say, a Truth Social or Twitter, of course, or forming on Twitter now, X. But Telegram seems to be a place that people are looking at with skepticism over propaganda. What do you know about it? So Telegram has really emerged as kind of the current um, platform du jour for criminal activity and nefarious activity. It's not to say that everyone on Telegram is a criminal, they're certainly not, uh, but we've seen in the past that some platforms that have looser rules about content regulation and things like that tend to become magnets for underground activity and things like that. Telegram is one of those places right now. There's a bustling uh, com uh, uh, economy 
of uh, buying and selling stolen identities and, mm. and information that's been taken in cyber security attacks and things, uh, cyber attacks and things like that. So it shouldn't be surprising to us that extremists and people who are trying to stay off the radar but need to communicate with each other, they gravitate to platforms like Telegram. Gosh, my spidey senses of First Amendment law is coming up to think about lack of content regulation, more skepticism about propaganda and what could happen next. And then there's that catch-22. That's right. What do you do about it, right? right. Andy McCabe, so important to hear you. Thank you so much. And next, I'm going to talk with the family of a six-year-old Palestinian-American boy who was stabbed to death, allegedly in an anti-Muslim attack at his own home in Chicago. Dozens of rockets coming in here. Those interceptions right above us. We have been hearing repeated exchanges of gunfire. You can see the scale of the destruction. If you know anything about what they do to people in Gaza, that is worse than death. My children and grandchildren experienced a living hell. How difficult is this fight going to be on the ground? We have no other place to go. Breaking news coverage continues live from Israel. At Simply Safe, your safety is the only thing that matters. Introducing 24/7 live fire protection, only from Simply Safe. This exclusive technology allows Simply Safe agents to help stop crime in real time by speaking through the new smart alarm indoor camera. Stop. This is Simply Safe. Police are on their way. For instant intruder deterrence and faster police response. Police have arrived. Your home is safe. Advanced home security, 24/7 professional monitoring for less than a dollar a day. There's no safe like Simply Safe. Did you know you can save with GoodRx, even if you have insurance? I'm on Medicare. I check GoodRx because it can be my copay. Who wouldn't like that? Even if you have insurance, GoodRx can help you save. Another good reason to check GoodRx. While in line in an army hospital in Germany, my parents got a letter that said I had 48 hours to live. They even sent this flag to put on my coffin. As America's veterans face challenges, DAV is there. I left the military with a traumatic brain injury, and when I got home, I fought depression, anxiety, and alcohol, and had nothing to look forward to. DAV provides a lifetime of support to veterans of every generation, helping more than a million veterans each year. With DAV's help, my world changed 100%. I was able to build a new life for myself. With the right support, more veterans can reach victories, great and small. I'm Madam Greathouse, Army veteran. That there are more victories to be won. My victory is just experiencing life. Adam Greyhouse, thank you for your service. May your victories inspire many more. Support more victories for veterans. Go to DAV.org. This couple spent 10 more minutes in bed thanks to Roman. With Roman, you can take care of erectile dysfunction conveniently and discreetly. Because sometimes everything else can wait. Get started at roll.co slash Roman. Lose weight fast with Nutrisystem's Partner Plan. Together, lose up to 18 pounds in the first two weeks. The Partner Plan is a great value. Partners save 15% more money versus an individual plan. Plus, lose up to 20% more weight than doing it on your own. Together, we lost 85 pounds with Nutrisystem. Get food for two people shipped free every two weeks. Save 15% more money and lose up to 20% more weight than doing it on your own. Call or go online to get started right now. Get a job, on TNT. Hockey season begins with celebration. welcoming new cadets to join our youth program for 9 to 12 year olds. Navy League cadets discover the thrill of the sea and the joy of lifelong friendships. Develop leadership skills, discipline, and resilience that will shape their future. Visit our website or call us today to learn about the exciting journey of Navy League cadets and the oceans of opportunity. Ask a parent before going online. The Navy League of Canada, empowering the leaders of tomorrow. False or misleading search results can negatively impact your life. A bad online reputation can put you at significant risk of losing job opportunities or new customers. Reputation Defender helps clean up your search results, wiping away negative first impressions, allowing truthful, positive content to rise to the top. Don't you deserve to have more control over how you're represented online? 
Take your free reputation report card at reputationdefender.com or call 1-877-866-8555. Join Poppy and Phil on CNN This Morning, tomorrow at 6 Eastern. Tonight, a grieving Palestinian-American mother is recovering in a hospital outside of Chicago, and her six-year-old son has been laid to rest. Both were attacked in a brutal stabbing at their home, allegedly targeted for being Muslim. Authorities have arrested their 71-year-old landlord, Joseph Suba. You see him on the screen. And the DOJ has opened a federal hate crime investigation. Wadia's great uncle, Mahmoud Yusuf, joins me along with the executive director of Chicago's chapter of the Council on American Islamic Relations. Ahmed Rehab, thank you so much for joining us, both of you, today. Mahmoud, I, I want to begin with you, and I, I honestly cannot express how sorry I am to be meeting you this way. I want to begin by asking you about <laughs> Wadia. Tell me about this little boy just six years old, a kindergartner. Yes, he is. He's a kindergartner. Uh, six-year-old, just like any other six-year-old. So he was a lot of fun, exciting. He likes to laugh. Uh, he has a lot of friends. And uh, yesterday we were talking about with the family, and they do miss him already. Uh, he had... Uh, we were looking just like for his future, right. and unfortunately, it was taken very early. How is your family coping? His mother, in particular, any any idea of how she is doing right now? Uh, until now, we have no idea what uh, what how is she right now. Uh, they're not letting us uh, talk to her or see her or even visit her. Mm -hmm. uh, up to this point, we we're trying, but. They told us we have to wait. Uh, I'm here today uh, because his father, he couldn't make it because uh, until now, he, he's still in disbelief of what just happened. So it's not easy. It's not easy. I mean, Ahmed, well, why would it be that they could not speak to his mother? Do you have any idea? Well, she was stabbed 12 times. Uh, this was a brutal and heinous attack. She was stabbed 12 times. The little boy was stabbed 26 times. The 12 inch knife was still in his abdomen when he was taken for an autopsy. She was stabbed in the face, in the cheek. She can't talk. Um, she is in severe distress emotionally, of course, with the trauma that she experienced. Um, so it's perhaps the hospital wants her to be protected from the interest of the public. Uh, we're still trying to get in contact. It's, it's what you describe is truly heinous and unbelievable to think that that has happened to anyone, let alone a child or his mother. Let me ask you, I mean, the war is now in the Middle East, and yet there is a victim, at least two, his little boy, his mother, of course, here in America. We are seeing repercussions here. What does that feel Absolutely. like? It, it, you know, it feels really frustrating and painful. And this is a conversation we're just going to have to have. I mean, there is a cognitive dissonance that we're experiencing here. Ironically, just before this segment discussing the brutalizing of this family, there was a segment discussing the potential imminent threat from the Muslim community. And it's reports like that, that this evil man was watching. He got radicalized by the coverage of the media that has been consistently lopsided and one-sided. Not unlike, frankly, what I'm seeing on CNN and other networks. Statements from politicians. And this caused this man who otherwise had been normal. He had built a treehouse for the boy, he had brought him toys, to flip, become radicalized, become a monster, and stab them to death that many times because he thought they were a threat. So I think we need to not dissociate how we talk about the issues, how we dehumanize Palestinians, how we erase their suffering from how certain people flip and radicalize and commit these crimes. I think your point is, is certainly not lost on me, and particularly the way that um, we speak about, um, in a detached way, it might appear. Um, I assure you that that's not how I, I view it. Um, I wonder, Mahmoud, and for you in particular as well, and hearing about this as it's described, um, thinking about how people are becoming responsive to and reactive to things they may be hearing in different outlets, what is the way to stop it? 
what was what is the way that you want to see things done this should not have happened to this little boy uh for the last couple of days we've been going around like i was in uh thank you yesterday and we, we were talking about this issue uh unfortunately a lot of people they have like a, a phobia or they have uh, some certain type of phobia from muslims and they look at them they look at them as monsters or uh, are described uh, overseas as animals. Uh, I think uh, it starts with the leaders of our country. Uh, when they hear something like, uh, let's say, uh, some type of news, don't just come and say it before you make sure where this news is coming from and if it's even true or not. This, this type of information, when you give to somebody, like this gentleman here, like we said just a while ago, just like Hamid said, he was a normal person. There was no problem with him. He loved the kid, and suddenly he just switched because of what he hears from the news. And most of those, the things that he hears, unfortunately, is not even true. That's where we have to start. And we have to start with the community. The community, unfortunately, they are very judgmental sometimes. Why don't you just ask if you if you fear something? Why don't you ask? We have I know a lot of people out there. Their neighbors are Muslims, and they're very good friends. I mean, I have a lot of neighbors. We we are in very wow. perfect terms, and the reason is we ask, we communicate. You know, we haven't had as many cases at Care Chicago the way we're having now as we have we have since 9-11. I mean, these are the most number of cases we've had in terms of hate incidents, women being attacked at Burger Kings and at McDonald's and at grocery shops and at, you know, gas mm. stations. Uh, this incident was obviously unique in how brutal it was, but there are many incidents that we're not talking about that are happening as a result of the atmosphere that we are in. I think we can all agree that we stand against any atrocious acts against civilians, Israeli or Palestinian. Yeah. Mm. That's something that we can agree on. But as much as we can collectively condemn terrorism, we must collectively condemn war crimes, shutting off of water, electricity, food, uh, bombing of hospitals. And I know there's all this back and forth about who did it, but we've seen many hospitals bombed before in Gaza and other places. We need to be brave enough and courageous enough to have these real conversations and humanize both sides. We don't need to demonize one side or another. Humans are humans. They have their good, their bad, they have their shortcomings. We need to have an adult conversation. We have a cartoonish atmosphere right now mm -hmm. in which we demonize an entire population and make them ripe for the killing. You and know uh, what, both of you... Right now, there's a lot of families that are not taking... Oh, no, I didn't want to cut you off. Go ahead. You, I, your point is taken. I just wanted to reiterate that I really do hear you. And I think tonight is an opportunity for us to expand um, beyond the conversations that have been having, and we are going to have that conversation tonight um, in particular. Thank and you, I'm glad we're actually having You've a given us a platform glad to be able to share our feelings, yeah. and, and we appreciate you. Uh, I'm glad that you came. Your insight and story is important, and I'm glad that you told us about, sadly, the other incidents that have been going on. Thank you to you both, and I'm looking forward mm -hmm. to hearing about the recovery mm -hmm. of this young woman who lost her son. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. You know, he hit the nail on the head in terms of how a lot of us are struggling to find ways to talk about what's happening in the Middle East and how it's being said and what the focus is and um, whether it's demonization or information. How does it all come out? I'm going to speak with a rabbi and an imam right here in studio who tell me what they are saying to their faith communities. Next. Hi, I'm Jason. I've lost 228 pounds on the road. Changing your habits is the only way that gets you to lose the weight. And Golo is the plan that's going to help you do that. Just take the first step. Go to Golo.com. Alright, let's try this. COVID has been a really long fight, and it's been mm. especially tough on kids. It's been a rough transition for all of us. Right now, as a father, I want to give them the best tools to protect my kids. So what can we do to get back to that sense of normalcy? Many parents are asking if it is worth it to get their kids vaccinated mm. against COVID. 
The answer is absolutely yes. My own sons who are six and eight years old had their COVID vaccine. It's an added layer of protection to keep kids from getting any type of severe illness or complications from a COVID infection. A lot of parents are also wondering if the vaccines are safe. Yes, it's safe and effective for children. Definitely safer than a COVID infection. <clears throat> children get a smaller dose than adults do. So if you have questions or concerns about the vaccine, that's okay. We're here to help. We have the tools we need to protect kids and help them stay healthy and all get through this together. After I got out of the Marine Corps, coming back home, it was just a mental breakdown for me. I was on the verge of giving up. That chapter, that season in my life was over. Now what? Who was I? That's what I kept asking myself. The pressure to have it all together, to heal, to quiet down the monsters inside, it was too much. I lost it. I had heard about the Wounded Warrior Project. I had seen the logo and that visual of a warrior carrying another warrior. The programs that the Wounded Warrior Project offers, it's yeah. not just the veteran themselves, it's its their whole family and brings it all together. We have scars that we carry, and just because the scars are there doesn't mean that we're any less than what we were. Right now, I, I'm the best version that I ever have been of myself. I can embrace the brokenness. You wouldn't go into battle alone. You don't have to fight this alone. Visit woundedwarriorproject.org slash not alone. Ukraine going to win this war? To bring the stories that matter to the masses. This is a reminder of the violence that faces migrants. These are issues that affect so many people around the world. We just signed the lease on our third shop. My assistant went to customink.com to get new uniforms with all the locations. He found great products, uploaded new art, and had boxes sent to all the shops. Custom Ink makes it so easy. Get started today at customink.com. When the details take precedence, the rest falls perfectly into place. We strip away everything but the essential. And what we're left with are thoughtful bedrooms for modern living. Zuma. It's sports fans built a streaming service. Movies and shows, live TV, more local sports. This is your big three that crushes cable. And they changed the batteries and all three smoke detectors. Boomba! ShipStation saves us so much time. It makes it really easy and seamless. Pick an order, print everything you need, slap the label onto the box, and it's ready to go. Our cost for shipping and like work cut in half, just like that. Go to ShipStation.com slash try and get two months free. I'm Melanie Genona in Washington, and this is CNN. Well, there are protests around the country today in the streets of New York and Chicago, St. Paul, Minnesota, where I'm from, and Washington, D.C. as well. More than 300 protesters were arrested on Capitol Hill, including some from the Jewish organization that wore shirts reading, Not in Our Name on the front, and Jews say, Cease Fire Now on the back. That's just one example of what we've seen today. And tensions are high. People are voicing their opinions. And the truth is, in the face of all of the unknowns of what's happening in Israel and in Gaza, it's hard to talk about with you know, perhaps your friends or colleagues or our parents and our children. Most of us know how we might feel, but struggle to understand what's in the minds and the hearts of those we need to have these conversations with. So as I told you with our last conversation our guests, we need to have these conversations. And I'm going to turn to two faith leaders, one Jewish, one Muslim, who are facing down these tough and necessary talks within their own communities today. Joining me now is senior rabbi at Washington Hebrew con Congregation, Susan Shankman, and executive oh. Imam Albert Sabir of Majid Muhammad, the nation's mosque. 
I'm glad that the two of you are here today. It felt like a minefield for so many people who are leaning in to engage, trying to climb that very steep learning curve throughout every nuance, and having the visceral human reactions we're all having right now. What are you telling your members of your congregation about how to process? I think people are really struggling with what they're seeing in the images and, uh, and understanding and trying to understand what's happening and in real time. And at the same time, coping with all of the feelings that go along with that, a sense of fear, a sense of powerlessness, uh, and a sense of just a, a real um, deep sadness, uh, sorrow over the loss of life, over violence, and over uh, any hopes for peace being far, seeming farther away at this time. And I think people are really having a, a challenging time processing all of that, and also a sense of, you know, what, what do we do in our daily lives? How do we continue to live our, our lives when this all these terrible things are happening far away, but also so close to our communities, and they really impact us all. I mean, I, I honestly, I, I fear that people will start to hate and will look at one another in ways that brings the conflict home and creates hostility in places we would not want it to be. Do you have that yes. concern? Well, we thank you for inviting us here and for being here. And uh, Rabbi Schneck and I have some relationship, a uh, building relationship over the years. Um, just recently, the Unity Wall. So yes, uh, there's been an upsurge in wanting to know what to do. Uh, there's been an upsurge in the need to pray. So we say to our congregation that remember God, that he's the one that created you, and he's the one that nourished and evolved you. Remember him. Keep focus on that and read the scripture. Mm -hmm. Look and, and be attentive to what communication is coming. Uh, be obedient in that communication. And also read it again to see what is that communication saying to you. Mm -hmm. So this is a difficult time, challenging time. Uh, our nervous system is being impacted. So we must rise above and we seek to the guidance of the scripture uh, to, to give us that guidance. Mm -hmm. uh, so that we'll know how to behave. And of course, we have our prophets and all that, and we tell our congregation, we remind our congregation, if Hamas had asked themselves the question, would Prophet Muhammad do that to innocent people? And the answer would come back, no, he wouldn't. Peace and blessings upon him, the model for us. So we are constantly telling our congregation, read the guidance. See what the guidance is communicating to you. Mm. Be attentive to it. Be obedient to it. And then read it again and see what it is saying to you. No, that, that doesn't surprise me at all that we're, we're talking about the same things with our congregations. The, the scriptures might be slightly different, yeah. but even last week uh, when everything started, we had just started reading uh, the Torah portion and the beginning. The very We'd started the, the whole Torah over and at the very beginning, we read the story of creation, and we're told that in the beginning, it was everything was chaos. It was it was void. It was uh, just it, it was dark. Yeah. And uh, and God created the world with with light, with yeah. with the word yeah. and with light. And that the reminder to each of us is that we have to bring that light. That we have that ability to bring light into the world, and we need to remember that even when things when there's darkness, uh, that there is still light, and we have that that power to to bring that in what we do and how we react. And even when I think about the, the times that we've spent together as a community to hold on to that, on, on to, the, to hold on to the humanity yeah. uh, and to be the light for, for one another, for our fellow human beings. Even, even if the words that we're using are different, uh, I think that, that sentiment is so important. Yes. And yes, we have to face those difficult talks, those challenging talks. Mm -hmm. We know our ground speaks about oppression being worse than slaughter, I mean worse than slaughter. So we have to understand that, we have to see what it's telling us, and then we have to move in the correct way to address it. And we address it with our father, mm -hmm. Ibrahim, Abraham, mm -hmm. Ibrahim. Mm -hmm. The hope, the miller, the hope of Ibrahim, that the universality will come to light. Now, Ibrahim has to do something to conceive that, 
He got rid of some idols, didn't he? Yes, he did. Yeah. yeah. So he both of us know that Christian, Muslim, Jew, or Father Abraham, right? So he removed those idols. And then when we think about Adam, we know Adam, when he was born, he didn't have nationality in it. Mm -mm, mm -mm. But for one moment, what would happen if the Israeli shook that nationality really out of the way? What would happen if the Palestinians stripped the Palestinians out of the way? We are one human being. Mm. So strip those, forgive me if I'm going to say this, but strip those idols out of the way, and you'll see that the light will come in. And it's so heart-wrenching to see the six-year-old uh, young man, uh, Fayumi. What do you yeah, his light stood out. Mm -hmm. We didn't even get a chance on this earth to see what his intellect, what his mental light would have brought to us. What sun would have gone off in his being, the sun. And we know the sun provides service to the earth. You know what, and what you service would he have done for humanity? We don't have the answer, sadly, but what strikes me in this conversation, just hearing the two of you speak and the warmth between, there's a level of optimism that one could glean, but also the connective tissue. And I think we should feed more on that in our next conversations. Thank you so much, both of you. you Thank you. It. Thank you. Thank you. Rabbi Susie, Susan, I gave you a nickname, <laughs> Rabbi Susan Shankman, Imam Albert Sabir, we'll be right back. No matter what type of severe asthma you have, Tespire can help you have fewer attacks and relieve your asthma symptoms. Tespire is an adult treatment for people 12 and over. It is not a rescue medication. Don't take Tespire if you're allergic to it. Allergic reactions may occur and can be serious. Rash or eye allergy can happen. Don't stop your asthma treatments unless your doctor tells you to. Tell your doctor if you have a parasitic infection or your asthma worsens. Sore throat, joint, and back pain may occur. Avoid live vaccines. No matter who you are, ask your asthma specialist about Tespire today. This couple spent 10 more minutes in bed thanks to Roman. With Roman, you can take care of erectile dysfunction conveniently and discreetly. And sometimes, everything else can wait. Get started at roll.co slash Roman. That grimy film on your teeth. Dr. G. It's actually the buildup of plaque bacteria, which can cause cavities. Most toothpaste quit working in minutes, but Crespo Health's antibacterial fluoride protects all day. They stop cavities before they start. Cress. My heart is yours, dear, and your nights only lonely, and I promise this forever, just take my America are going to school hungry. Millions of kids every day. Hungry kids get sick more often and can struggle in school. It can be hard for them to focus and learn. But one simple thing can help change all of this for a hungry child in America. Good healthy food and the energy it brings. With help from caring people across America, no Kid Hungry is providing healthy meals and hope to hungry kids so they can build better futures. We want to ensure that all of our kids have healthy meals every day. Thank you. Oh. Thank you for helping oh. feed our kids. To learn more about eating oh. child hunger in America, go to helplittlekidhungry.org. Apologies, I'm still experiencing my diverticulitis and then pain and suffering. Sorry, don't need to put it on you. Oh. Oh. Got to get rid of the bias and prejudice making people crazy. A song by Paul Beckman, probably a song also. The new and first leader of humankind in the free world. Oh, created October 18th, 2023. Mm. God. 
gotta get rid of the bias and prejudice Making people crazy Gotta get rid of the bias and prejudice Making people crazy Well one of the reasons why it's important to do Is because bias and prejudice is usually not based on truth at all So if you see truth and prejudices that you may carry so to get rid of bias to get rid of truth not truth to get rid of prejudice bias and prejudice sorry <laughs> well I got it right I corrected myself in the end didn't I that's right to get rid of bias and to get rid of prejudice you need to and an investigation yes the quest of truth especially ultimate truth we'll see you through we'll see you through A song by Paul Beckman, Paul the Rainbow Song. The song is going to be called something along the lines of <clears throat> when there's misinformation adding to prejudice and bias what you need is correct information especially in accord with scientific fact Created October 21st, 2023. If I can think of a better title, I'll, I'll do that. Again, by Paul Beckman, probably in the song, also the new first leader of humankind in the free world. Oh. <laughs> hum. Well, when there's a lot of information out there, the trouble is that there's misinformation too. Many people, take the masses for instance, they could get infected too. If the first piece of news they light upon, or the only one they light upon, is full of misinformation, disinformation, not the truth, they could take that and write on it and form opinions, become passionate and become a lynch mob mentality even a gathering worse they could turn to violence harm others on the planet to destruction because they did not question authority enough they did not search for the truth enough they did not look for the truth in accord with science or with scientific fact enough. That's what you gotta do if you wanna be a true philosopher, if you wanna be a true truth seeker. You must always question authority, no matter where it's from. No matter how close or how far. If you wanna know truth, you gotta always seek it out. Especially in this world as it becomes more and more a 
associated with disinformation, misinformation, and the illusion of correct information, especially if it's not. Well, you're going to have to search out your criteria for truth. What is in everything that always makes it truth? You're going to have to become more of a detective and a sleuth. Good on you if you do. In fact, it's a new responsibility in this age of enlightenment that's dawning. You gotta seek the true. In fact, if you're to seek the true self, you'd have to seek the true. If you're to seek the answers of the universe, you'd have to seek the true. Don't wanna get a tangent of misinformation that could dog you down forevermore. You get nowhere. prejudices and biases because they have no business being there under those conditions. Now if only the masses in many of the Arab countries could understand that and do that, that would help things, right? As we're seeing now. <laughs> 